Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to the Winter Wonderland Storytime event with me, Miss Ashley. Today, we're going to be sharing some special stories all about <gasps> Hanukkah. Hanukkah is a new holiday that Miss Ashley learned all about just for you guys. And I even have a friend who celebrates Hanukkah. So she helped me pick out these two very special books, both of which are available for immediate checkout at the Monrovia Public Library for curbside checkout. So make sure, boys and girls, you're letting your mom and dad and grandparents and guardians who watch you that we do have curbside checkout for all our fun books. Okay, let's get started. Today, I'm going to start off by telling you the story of Hanukkah. Over 2,000 years ago, Jews lived in the land of Judea, which is now called Israel. The center of their worship was a great temple in the city of Jerusalem. In the temple, there was an eternal flame that burned day and night as a symbol of the Jewish faith. When the Syrian king Antiochus came to rule Judea as part of the Greek empire, he ordered Jews to give up their religion and follow the Greek religion instead. Some Jews obeyed the king, but many others did not. This made the king very angry. He sent his troops to Judea, where they burned down homes and killed many Jews. They tore up the inside of the temple, destroying the precious eternal flame. Then they put up statues of Greek gods and goddesses. In a small village called Modin, a man called named Judah Maccabee led a small band of Jewish farmers, shepherds, teachers, in a fight against the king's army. This band, later to be known as the Maccabees, had no experience as soldiers very few weapons, and was ten times smaller than the king's army. But they believed in what they were doing, fighting for the right to practice their religion, and this belief gave them strength, courage, and hope. Finally, after three years of winning the battle against the king's army, the Maccabees reached Jerusalem and reconquered it. When they saw what the king's men had done to the temple, they wept. But soon after, the Jews went to work. They scrubbed the temple and threw out the Greek idols. The word Hanukkah means rededication. At last, they were ready to rededicate the temple to God. But when they searched for oil to light the eternal flame, they found only one jug of sealed pure oil, enough to last for just one day. But instead, the oil burned on and on for eight days. It was a miracle. With great joys, the Jews proclaimed, let us celebrate these days every year so that the story of the Maccabees victory over the Syrian army and the miracle of the oil will never be forgotten. Wow. I didn't know that story. Did you boys and girls? That was a great story. Are you guys ready to read? I have a book called it's Hanukkah and it's by Jan Mostet and illustrated by Robin Sprawett. Let's read it together. It's Hanukkah! Where are they going? Maybe Grandma's house? The candles are so bright, they shine out into the night. Do we see the candles, boys and girls? So Hanukkah has eight candles for eight nights that the oil burn. We gather around real close to the light, we give a toast. We listen to a tale, our imagines, our imagines sail, imaginations sail. Mama gives us all treats, lovely locks to eat. Lovely locks. It's a special cake. The dreidels they are spinning, and everyone is winning. We give each other gifts, our hearts, how they lift. Auntie sings a happy song and everyone joins along. We feel so much cheer, we hug everyone near. We at last go to bed after one more tale is read.
We kiss each other good night and we dream of dancing lights. The end. And it does include the story of Hanukkah. It does include how the mouse family lights their menorah, which is the candle holder that holds the eight candles. As the mouse family lights the candles, they say Hanukkah blessings, which it includes that. It includes a recipe for lactase. And it also has the game of the dreidel and how to play. So this book, it's Hanukkah, is available for checkout at the Monrovia Public Library curbside pickup. So make sure you guys get your um, get your book there. Okay. Next, we're gonna read something called The Hanukkah Moon by Deborah de Costa. Hanukkah Moon. And it's illustrated by Gosia Mos. dark in the morning as we leave to Aunt Luisa's house. I breathe foggy clouds into the air. <sighs> Can you boys and girls do that? Go, <sighs> do you guys see your air? Maybe not right now, but in the morning, huh? Tell me again, Mama, what's going to happen at Aunt Luisa's? Mama smiles, a very special Hanukkah party. But Aunt Luisa just moved here from Mexico. Will she know how we celebrate Hanukkah here? Of course, Papa says. At Aunt Luisa's, you will also get to celebrate the Hanukkah moon. The Hanukkah moon? I've heard of a blue moon and even a man on the moon, but never a Hanukkah moon. Before I get an answer, we pull up to Aunt Luisa's and she's waiting in the doorway holding her cat Paco, who seems to be smiling. Papa hands her my suitcase and then he tucks some chocolate Hanukkah coins in my pocket to sweeten your visit, he said, hugging me. We wave as Mama and Papa pull away, and I unwrap a chocolate coin and I pop it into my mouth. <gasps> Aunt Luisa's house is filled with colorful rugs and lots of photos on the wall. I admire a pink shiny banner over the fireplace which says, Feliz Hanukkah. Do you guys see that? Feliz Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. That's how you spell it in Spanish. The letters are made out of tiny photos of birds. That means Happy Hanukkah in Spanish, Aunt Luisa explains, and the birds are from my birdhouse. And she points to a huge bare branch tree in her backyard. Hanging from the dining room ceiling is a giant piñata shaped like a dreidel. Wow, I say. Or when are we going to break open that piñata? The night of the Hanukkah moon, Aunt Luisa replies. What exactly is a Hanukkah moon, I ask. Wondering if it's a moon shaped like a huge potato latte? You'll find out soon enough, Aunt Luisa says. I pop another chocolate coin into my mouth. I wonder about birds and I can't see a moon I've never heard of. In the kitchen window, a big Hanukkah that looks like a boat with birds, squirrels, raccoon, and deer. I like your Hanukkah, I tell Aunt Luisa. I've never seen one like it. I made it myself, she says. It's my little Noah's Ark modeled after my backyard friends. I look out the window and the backyard is empty. I guess Aunt Luisa has a great imagination, right? Look at that. Really cool, huh? That night we celebrate by lighting Hanukkah and eating lactis. I give Aunt Luisa a little silver dreidel from Israel and she gives me a small package wrapped in shiny blue paper. Like a little, it's a little camera. I take pictures of Paco sleeping on his back, pictures of playing Paco with the ball, Paco looking out the window. That's a lot of pictures of cats, huh? And Luisa smiles. I'm glad you like taking pictures, Isabel. May you, maybe you can visit one of my photography classes. You take classes, I ask? I teach them, she answers. At the university, you'll get to meet some of my students soon. Look at that, she has a nice camera, huh? I look outside again before I go to bed and there's hardly any moon, just a silver, a tiny sliver of light. And I fall asleep, dreaming of a moon shaped like a giant dreidel that pops open, showering the world with Hanukkah gifts. And Luisa wakes me early. The sun is just coming up quick, she says. Throw on your coat and slippers and take your camera. We walk outside the bird tree. Shh, she says. 
The tree's full of birds chirping and buzzing at the peeking away the feeders. Take some pictures, she whispers. And then we can look in my bird book and see which ones they are. Look at that. I take lots of pictures and Aunt Louisa takes them too. When we are finished, we go back to the house for jelly donuts and cocoa. While Aunt Louisa prints the pictures, I get dressed. And while I look outside again, the sun is up, but the birds are gone. Aunt Louisa spreads our photos out on the dining table next to her bird book. We have taken pictures of black capped chickadees, cardinals, kinglets, and blue jays. The chickadees are wearing little, ja little black hats that look like yarmulkes. Yame. Yarmulkes. And maybe they are Hanukkah birds, and maybe they will bring the Hanukkah moon. That night after we lit the Hanukkah, and Louisa gave me a beautiful scrapbook for our bird photos. Outside, the moon has gotten even smaller. I wake up to a delicious smell. And Louisa's baking dreidel shaped cookies. Look at that. As I help her cut them out, I sing dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. I made it out of clay. And Aunt Louisa sings back. Trampo, 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 lo hice de barro. We sing more verses in English and Spanish. While we sprinkle the cookies with colored sugar, I eat two before Aunt Luisa stops me. You could have plenty more tonight, she says, when we celebrate the Hanukkah moon. At last, I will get to see this mysterious Hanukkah moon. I help Aunt Luisa cut the vegetables for couscous, and we brush Baco until his fur shines. Aunt Louisa puts plates of grapes, nuts, berries outside on a low table and she adds a small bowl of water. We may have a surprise visitor tonight, she tells me. Why don't we just invite them in, I ask. Aunt Louisa just laughs and I wonder if these surprise guests have bad manners. It's starting to get dark when Aunt Louisa's students arrive. They kiss Aunt Louisa on the cheek and shake my hand. It's so bad. Meet Vida, Bastiva, and Naomi, Aunt Luisa says. Vida is carrying a huge bunch of flowers. Bastiva holds a straw basket filled with little boxes of sweets. And Naomi has two cameras dangling from her shoulders. We join Aunt Luisa in the blessing of the lights, and she adds a special reading. Tonight is Rosh, Rosh Hodesh, the beginning of a new month and an important time for women. You remember that when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments, he found the Israelites worshiping a golden calf, according to tradition. The women refused to contribute their gold to help build the idol. Their reward was a special holiday once a month, Rosh Hadan, the time of the new moon. Wow, I say, I did not know that. After dinner, it's time to break open the piñata. I stand on the chair and whack it hard with a stick while Luisa holds me tight. Out fall bags of chocolate coins with tiny prices. Wow and double wow. That's all I could say. This is the best Hanukkah. It's not over yet, Aunt Louisa says. Let's go outside. Look at that. What are they doing? They're hitting a piñata. Have you ever had a piñata, boys and girls? So much fun, right? It's very dark on Aunt Louisa's porch. The sky is black as ink and there's no moon at all. It has disappeared like the morning birds. Shh, Aunt Louisa whispers. We don't want to scare away our guests. But where's the Hanukkah moon? I whisper. Aunt Louisa points to the sky. It's there, she says. It's the Luna Nueva, the new moon that always appears during Hanukkah. Why can't I see it? I ask. Because the bright side is facing away from the earth, she explains. Tomorrow night, it will start to reappear. I see that. My eyes are getting used to the dark. And now I can see the guests. Two deer and a big fat raccoon are eating the nuts and berries Aunt Louisa left for them. <gasps> Look, I whisper. Yes, she whispers back. They come in the dark when they feel safe. While we watch Aunt Louisa's, students take pictures of their special night cameras. When all the food is gone, the animals disappear and we go inside. As the guests leave, we wish each other a happy Hodosh Tov, a good month. That night, I dream about a moon, birds, and animals that appear and disappear. In the morning, I pack my camera, scrapbook, and my piñata prizes. And Luisa braids my hair into a long braid, just like hers. 
I feel so sad to leave. While well, Mama and Papa come home and Luisa and I give each other hugs. I even hug Paco and I give Aunt Luisa some of my chocolate coins. So the rest of your Hanukkah will be sweet, I say. Can I come back again sometime and take more pictures and see your backyard friends and celebrate another Rosh Hashanah? Absolutely, says Aunt Luisa, smiling as she pops a chocolate coin in her mouth. As I smile back, I pop one in my mouth too. Look. The end. Did you boys and girls enjoy that story? I'm so glad you did. Do you guys want to sing the song, the Hanukkah song? We could sing it together, okay? Dreidel, 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 I made it out of clay. Dreidel, 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 I made it out of clay. Do you want to try it in Spanish? Si hablando, si me quiero cantar en español, okay? Trompo, 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 lo hice de barro. Trompo, 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 lo hice de barro. Let's try it one more time. Ready? We'll sing it in English. Dreidel, 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 I made it out of clay. Dreidel, 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 I made it out of clay. In Espanol. Trampo, 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 lo hice de barro. Trampo, 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 lo hice de barro. Very good, boys and girls. I'm so glad to have you enjoy your time with me. And thank you for listening to my Hanukkah story time. I hope you guys... If you are celebrating Hanukkah, have a blessed Hanukkah, and I hope you have the best time. Have a great and wonderful day, boys and girls. Bye-bye.